Yes, yes, yes. It's time for our Bible study once again. And today we are looking at Bible question and answers. Lesson 13. So you need to call someone, tell someone. In the meanwhile, you grab your pencil, paper, your Bible, and call someone, tell someone. It's time to study the Word of God. But before we go forward, let us bow our heads and ask God's presence with us. Thank you, dear Father, for another opportunity of delving into your words. May we at the end be better off because we would have taken the opportunity to allow your Holy Spirit to be in control. Bless us all, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So we are looking at the law of God, part two. We would have done part one previously and today we are continuing the law of God. So question number one. Can one know God and not keep his commandment? Can one know God and not keep his commandments? And we find the answer coming from 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. It tells us, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So this is very plain. You cannot know God without keeping his commandments. Because as John is telling us here, you are a liar. The truth is not in you. Question number two. What was Christ's attitude toward God's will or law? What was Christ's attitude toward God's will or law? And this time we find the answer in Psalm 40, 7 and 8. Psalm 40, 7 and 8. Seven reads, and I believe this, this is an extract from seven. He said, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. And this is in reference to Jesus Christ himself, proclaiming that he delight to do God's will because God's will or God's law is in his heart. Question number three. Who did he say will enter the kingdom of heaven? Who did he say will enter the kingdom of heaven? So the answer comes from the book of Matthew. And on this time we are looking at Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 Matthew 7 verse 21 and Matthew 7 21 reads not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven so you are saying that it is important that you do the will of his father so it's not what you say, it's more like what you do, how you choose to obey the Lord. Question number four. How will men be rated in relation to God's commandments? How will men be rated in regard, in relation to God's commandments? We look at Matthew once again. And this time we are looking at chapter 5, verse 19. Matthew 5, verse 19. And it says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, 
He shall be called the least of the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you can see uh, the ratings here. Who teach men not to observe or, eat what to, or to break one of these commandments, he shall be called leaf, least. But whosoever do and teach all of them shall be called great. So notice the contrast here. One least, the other great. Question number five. Why is the carnal mind enmity against God? Why is the carnal mind enmity against God? We look at Romans chapter 8 verse 7 for answer. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Romans 8 7. It says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, the natural mind that we possess is in enmity against God. It is enmity against God. Why? Because it is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. And this is why we are often asked to have a spiritual mind, because the natural mind is against God. Question number six. Can man of himself, unaided by Christ, keep the law? Can man of himself, unaided by Christ, keep the law? And that's a very important question. John 15, 5 gives us the answer. John 15, 5. Here we'll find the answer because it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And this is very important because as the reference here, we see the vine. The vine is the main source for, through which nutrients are being obtained, uh, the main source for the sustenance of the plant. And if we do not, as the branches are uh, attached to the vine, we know that it would result in us not being able to keep God's law because without Him, we can do nothing. So we must abide in Christ Jesus. Question number seven. What provision has been made by which we are enabled to keep God's law? What provision has been made by which we are enabled to keep God's law? We look at Romans once again, Romans chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. It says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So the provision that has been made is that Christ came in the flesh, lived as a man, and overcame sin, telling us that if we allow the righteousness of Christ to shadow us or to cover us, we too can live like Christ without sin. That is what enables us. Of ourselves, we said saw that before, we cannot make it. But because of Christ, we can keep God's law. Let us always remember it is not I, but Christ. Question number eight. 
How does the renewed heart regard God's law? How does the renewed heart regard God's law? The answer comes from 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. 1 John chapter 5 verse 3. It says, For this is the love of God, that we keep the commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Right? So, the love of God is what enables us to keep the commandments. We have to realize that a renewed heart gives us a heart like God, and that is what enable us to keep God's commandments. Question number nine. What blessings or what blessing attends those who keep God's commandments? What blessing attends those who keep God's commandments? Psalms 19. Psalms 19 verse 11 gives us the answer. It says, Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. So, we get great reward by keeping God's commandments. But it is also important for us to note is that it is a commandment that exposes us and tells us when we are of course or when we are committing sin. But as we keep them, the rewards are great. Question number 10. What would obedience have ensured to ancient Israel? What would obedience have ensured to ancient Israel? Isaiah chapter 48 verse 18 provides us with the necessary answer. Isaiah 48 verse 18. It says, O oh, that thou hadst happened to my commandments, then had they peace, being as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. O oh, yes, my brother, my sister, peace, a peace that passes all understanding is sufficient for anyone who would keep God's commandment. It, obedience gives us that peace of mind that we need, right? And it said that righteousness as the waves of the sea. So we have peace as a river. And this indeed is wonderful as we look at question 11. What other blessing attends commandment keeping? What other blessing attends commandment keeping? It says, Psalms 11 verse 10. The answer is there. Psalms 111 verse 10. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Do you want it any better of that? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when you attend to God's commandment or by keeping God's commandment, you are at the stage of becoming wise. Having a good understanding, understanding even as you keep or do all God's commandments. This is so gratifying. This is so good to hear. What about question number 12? What promise is made to the willing and obedient? What promise is made to the willing and obedient? Isaiah 119. A very interesting text. Text, text for which uh, many people are familiar. It said, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And it's not only speaking about the good of the land here. He is speaking about the good of the land in the earth made new but we must be willing and obedient 
So we have come to the end of this study. And I'm sure that you are better able to deal with the law and the importance of God's law. What I would want to suggest to you is that you review both part one and part two of this very important study. Let us pray as we close. Merciful Father, God of love, thank you for your words. Thank you for the study. May we find time to review and to inculcate the things that we would have learned into our mind and into our life. We thank you in Jesus' precious name.